Uh, Simon. Now, you could have done, I would have thought, with all due respect to you, my friend, when you were at Palace, maybe things were getting tough. You could have done with someone like the Czech billionaire Daniel Kretinsky showing up on the horizon, Mm. couldn't you? Because he's doing just that, it would seem, um, for West Ham, purchasing, well, holding talks about purchasing a stake in West Ham in a deal that could spell the beginning of the end of the Sullivan Gold era of control. Um, So it's a mighty amount of money, isn't it? This guy apparently is going to come in um, and could offer as much as 150 million if the deal is completed. What I can tell you is Mr. Sullivan could say nothing to me this morning because he has signed a confidentiality agreement, but I am told nothing is imminent. Mm-hmm. Now, what, what's your take on it, Simon, as a former owner? Interesting that um, Newcastle's gone for 300 million and someone's prepared to pay, if you gross it up, the best part of proportionately 600 million. For a club because it values if you're going to buy 25% or there and thereabouts for mm. 150 million if those are the numbers that are being banded around then you're valuing West Ham at 600 million pounds they don't own their stadium um, and currently they're in good nick so it tells you that the brand of the Premier League is what people are buying West Ham are doing well at this moment in time and it will take uh, a continued and sustained support mechanism financially to continue to keep West Ham there and thereabouts because like everyone else you've got to keep investing in players look I mean Sullivan and Gold um, aren't saying very much about it the fact it's in the public domain I always find curious because there's no reason for it to be out in the public domain unless someone wants to put it out there Yeah, um, yeah. 27% takes away the controlling influence in the business t- from David and David if they've got the the, 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 bulk, the bulk of the shareholding anything above 75% enables you to do precisely what you want as the owner and shareholders in, in, in the business when you've got 73% then obviously there's a different structure is, is the benefit of this purchase if there was a purchase David Sullivan and David Gold because you can turn around and say, £150 million buys what? Does it buy David Sullivan and David Gold shares and they take that money? Or does it give mm. West Ham that money? So you have to look and say, what does it bring to West Ham? But what it does tell you is that we are in a territory of every single football club in this country will soon be owned by everybody else besides British people. Yeah, And that disappoints me and dismays me because if everybody else can see the value of our football clubs, why can't we see the oh, value of them? That's a good point. But we, should they cash out, Simon? I mean, they'd virtually double their money, wouldn't they? <sighs> Look, the club would be worth, what, 600 If million? I had listened to what they've listened to, I would run like a bandit. Um, because some of it is fair comment and some of it is not. They're never going to change the perspective of people. It will always be the team will be successful, we'll support the team, we'll support David Moyes, but David Gold and David Sullivan can do one as far as the fans are concerned. Yeah. So if their motivation was to own a football club which paid them back and gave them a big fat turn, as well as the, 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 the fact that it was a club they purport to support, yeah. then, then they're in that territory now. But I think that if West Ham can continue their progress and continue to build, build the stadium up to 62,000, build themselves up with a football club, then £600 million valuation may well be below the level that yes. football clubs yeah. can attract. Simon, are, there, are there some issues on, uh, as I understood it, that there are conditions of ownership with the stadium that they can't, they're going to be penalised tax-wise maybe if they sell it before 2023. So they maybe. can't actually sell it completely. Is that why they want to sell maybe a chunk of it? Maybe, uh, and maybe they don't want to sell their shareholding. Maybe they, maybe an investment is something similar to what Palace have just done. Palace have just taken a ninety million pound investment into the football club for twenty percent, um, valuing Palace at four hundred and fifty million quid. Mm. It takes the burden off the owners because quite clearly the football club needs to be funded. It doesn't generate enough revenue to wash its face if they want to compete. So it's an opportunity to take some money in. How that money lands in their pockets or the football clubs remains for to be discussion. Factoring the tax efficiencies of it all will be part and parcel of any discussion. But but the bottom line is is that we are talking about another football club being in play for another investor from overseas. Mm. Look, everyone's money's the same colour, but there is a thought in my mind that we are getting further and further away. We we had John Hall on the show last week talking about the nature of ownership. People don't buy our football clubs because they want to watch West Ham and it was something in their blood. They buy it because there's an ulterior motive. And we have to manage that expectation against the expectation of the world that we live in, which is football fans want to see more and more investment in their team. Yeah, This guy's a major shareholder, isn't he, in the Royal Mail and and, and Sainsbury's. So, you know, is he just an investor? I mean, when you look at West Ham, the uncertainty and how unstable you could say they've been this is the best they've ever been they're yes. fourth in the Premier League yeah. yeah, I mean flying in the Europa League yeah. they've knocked out both Manchester clubs in the, in the League Cup I don't think it gets any better now do they think okay this is optimum time to sell it but surely after what they've been through those two owners they'd want to 
be completely in charge now while they go into this really big period for, for um, most well, successful Well, yeah, yeah and nay. I mean, you've got to recognise what that's going to re- realise. Right now you're riding high. And there was a school of thought that when I put Palace in the Premier League down was the time for me to sell Crystal Palace because that was what I wanted to achieve, put me in the Premier League. You're in a big league now. The opportunities to maybe reduce some of the exposure upon you as an individual becomes more prevalent because everyone can see the vision once the vision arrives. Yeah. Other people have to fund that vision and then everyone sees it and goes, oh, I'll have a piece of that. But you must be clear in your mind that everybody's an investor. The Saudis didn't buy Newcastle for a gift. They bought Newcastle because... The PIF fund mm. has said that they want to double its worth, treble its worth over the next five, ten years to, to secure the finances of the Saudi Arabian uh, individuals that are behind it. And a football platform is part of that strategy, whether it's legitimizing their money or whether it's uh, giving... Do you, not see, do you not see the Newcastle takeover as very different? Because that's transformational. Well, we're talking about investment. Isn't it? Yeah, but transformational in terms of this club, Newcastle now is going to, will be unrecognisable. Yes. Whereas possibly. West Ham already kind possibly. of they're there, aren't they? But we're talking they're, about the, the motivations. Is... But yeah, but to, for West Ham to stay there, currently West Ham are doing fabulously, and it's great. And 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 long may it continue for them as a London football club. In order to maintain that position, they're going to have to go. To, if if we set the bar this high, and then the expectation wants you to stay at that level, you know and I know. There are a bunch of football clubs that spend £200 million every season. Arsenal spent £140 million last year. They're eighth in the league or wherever they are. Teams are going to spend significant amounts of money, whether it's Liverpool, whether it's Chelsea, whether it may be Spurs, uh, and whoever else, Manchester United, and whoever else we want to put in that mix. For West Ham to continue punching at this incredible rate that they're punching at, there will need to be the economic support behind it to keep it going. Yeah, And that means that somewhere along the line, someone's going to have to pony that money up. Now, Sullivan and Gold are not renowned for wanting to do that. They want to take it out of their own cash flow. They want to either lend the money to the club and charge them interest for doing it. Yeah. And now's an opportunity to maybe move away from that model. Sure. In comes Kretinsky with 150 million quid, uh, which will get him a 27% share in the club. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Thursday morning, 10 till 1. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.